sure that the life here gets rage off. And he's still unkillable with rage. There's, they have nothing for rage right now. Well, as they head out across the map, the smoke up, they're ready to go. Jackie, a whole host of uh, little items there. And the thing that I want to watch for is how do these early lanes set up? Is there any sort of dynamic in the mid matchup? The Mars versus Lesh feels very strange to me. It's Mars used to be really strong. His laning now has been nerfed a lot thanks to all the off laners who, you know, would just crush the lane. So now it's they, they ruined like, the hero. Yeah, they ruined. The, it's like same with Pugna. Pugna was really good mid, and now it's the supports ruined it for us. Oh. Or you mid laners. Yeah, yeah. Or you guys <laughs> have it so rough in that mid lane, you know. But the nice thing is, uh, Mars is able to. The level sixes on mid are really strong for the supports to come. That's when it's four, five, six minutes. They come mid, and Arena is one of the best spells to come mid to. And killing the Lush when he hits your tower with Arena is really easy. So. I would, I would say that the lane itself is fairly even, but it matters more so after the lane when the support's oh, rotate. Dude, the board just died, They too. move on in. Yopaj kind of in no man's land. Mira there getting set up with the stun. They got him caught and collapse. Drawing first blood, Team Spirit. They're on deck first. The big one, he now has tangos in his inventory on the OD. Go a little greedy, so now he's a little, his, you know, Mira's probably happy that he doesn't have to ferry him all the region in the lane. Well, moves on in, throws out the stun, and that gets them another bounty room. So Team Spirit looking to secure three to the one of Boom. FBZ, the only one that was able to Ooh, pick that nice one up. Oh, nice to nice. Good, good. So two for one. Could be worse. Well done with that boar. I think the big thing in this game is, again, it's going to be level six on the Mars mid, whether there's a play on the Siege mid, whether there's a kill in the Lesh or not. And then I think the OD will be pretty interesting to see how they play around him, whether they constantly go to him or they try to make him sit there to force the Shadowfin out of the lane. Yeah, or even like moves with him as well, like potentially sets up for some of their other heroes. And, and then you have to like keep an eye on this Leshrac too, because if the Leshrac isn't moving, then sometimes you just like lose your tower if you go for this big play with the arena and you miss or something. Yeah, those early rotations that we've seen, things get a little bit spicy in there. And We've seen a couple of teams prioritize this mid tier one tower over that safe lane tower a couple of times as well. Uh, we'll have to watch for where the movements go to. As uh, Tim's will try and do some zoning back here on the collapse. You mentioned earlier that one of the big worries was, do you just lose your lane outright? How does OD do in this lane? In the mid lane, Shadowfiend is generally good versus OD because you can just press raise and he has to walk away. And the nice thing is his stats are very strong on OD, so even just as a hero, he has high movement speed, he has 320, he has good damage. So I, I would say he's probably going to lose relatively early, but once he starts getting the level 3, Radiant's level 4 range coming. where he has Astral, he'll be able to just pump out the damage. It got buffed last patch, so now it's an 18 second cooldown on the Astral level 1, and it's 120 damage for pretty much free. You don't have mana on this. Hey, it's such a different spell on the side lane too, because like you can actually like fully wrap around. You can like completely surround someone when you Astral them on a the side lane compared to the mid lane where the tower is there to help you. And interesting there, he's going for the Arcane Orb and the Essence Flux build. So opting to just keep more uh, pressure on throwing out those orbs consistently uh, against, I guess, Marcy in lane. Kind of cool. It's Here just nice to keep on lanes. So he can uh, pretty much guarantee last hits. Yeah. It's like 50 pure damage, so it's really hard to mess up the last hits. And this is going to be a start when he's maxing it, because he can still get it maxed by level 7. And the level 1 of the spell is not as good compared to the orb. Again, interrupted a little bit there. Now trying to pull the creep wave back over and connect them. Does look like he's going to be able to get a couple. But Tim's doing a really good job of being annoying. It has tended to be his role on this team. Uh, try and frustrate the enemy off lane to the best of their ability or whoever he's facing off against. And he is in, uh, I would say, his best role, right? This early initiator, definitely where Tim's tends to shine. It's uh, like the, the melee heroes, course. right? Yeah, the melees, the, the touches, the clockwork, something like that. Or Ruben. I mean, we'll give him one lane sure. There you go. And then on the other side of the map, top, I think this lane is going to be fairly chill. The This Beastmaster, again, it's similar to the PL from the last game. They pick this not to Radiance Courier has been destroy the lane. They pick it as more of a game counter. So even if they go even in the lane... Oh, that was that was nasty. Yep. Oh, man. All right, so it's not a sidekick that makes this good. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good combo. Jeez. A lot of spells that do a lot of things on this hero. Yeah. Stun, slows, displacement, movement speed. So far across all the lanes, looking pretty good. A slight advantage for each of these boom heroes over their counterparts in the lane. And we'll see if, uh, you know, Team Spirit 
oftentimes these Skemp. lineups that they build. Gonna later. find a courier. Yeah, that's a little interesting. Type. All right, cool. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. He probably clicked it somewhere under the tower to hide it. Because and... yeah. it was on the way back. Yeah. I don't think I had anything on it. No, it was empty, yeah. Now he's telling you, Toro, please don't feed these boots. We need yeah, the boots yeah, to yeah. crush <laughs> the lane. Skem's gonna make a move for the four minute water rune. These four minute runes are really important. A lot of the time where the matchups are relatively close, if you don't get a water rune, it starts to get very hard. And the Lesh uses a lot of mana. So, you're gonna lose out of water rune. Yeah, you're gonna big stack to the play at the same time, too. So, the big efficiencies here from Skem. Yeah, that oh, is gonna be a huge injection of gold for them later if they wanna farm that up with either FBZ uh, or for that Shadow Fiend. We'll have to watch for it. FBZ just tanking through a bunch of damage from Maposhka. This Lich. Bot lane. More. A nice jump on Collapse. Thing. Collapse in trouble, but Jackie cleaning him up. So another kill down bottom. Really, really nicely played. He got a two-man uh, dispose. Or rebound, rather. And then just two raises, the OD dies. He's, uh, he's going treads. It looks like he's just going to go rush the Ags on the OD, which is... Last time he was popular as the offlane, he would go Meteor Hammer. Yeah. And he'd play for the, you know, wait till the H on Banished, pressure Meteor Hammer for the perfect timing. But it looks like now he's just playing purely for the Astral. Yeah. Which is understandable a little bit there, but not having a great time on that OD to start at the very least. As uh, Spear, gonna connect onto that tower. Make sure that Yopaj can secure those couple of last hits. As... Again, slow and steady, as we've often seen happen uh, in these elimination matchups. Your team really wants to leave to try and rotate to one of those other lanes. Things can get go south very quickly. Yeah, none of these uh, early moves mid. Skem just too busy doing his stacks, and also, you know, you're a disruptor. So it's all right. that great. And obviously, you can see the benefits of having the Mercy down bottom. I think the two big moves this game right now are going to be whether they go mid on the arena timing, which is about to hit right now. Mm -hmm. It looks like the supports are kind of locked in their lanes due to how Team Spirit drafted. But I think the other move that is really important is I think Yotaro is going to look to TP bot at some point relatively soon. One Astral into a life that are just hitting you. He has Ghoul Frenzy. He has all the slow he needs. So once the, I would say that's going to happen right around when Beast hits Dom. So in the next minute or two, you'll probably see him abandon the lane. Now, this is, again, the moments when uh, Boom have looked at their strongest, when they make sure that they enable Yopaj to get everything he wants, and they bring in two supports, going to secure that rune, uh, which is going to spawn up top. So Yopaj gets the DD. And again, this is two separate rounds where Boom has got their supports to run mid and deny out Toronto Tokyo. And look at this. They just run right into his jungle, too. No no big stacks even for him right now, uh, unfortunately. It's Leshrac, someone who just like doesn't even matter how many units there are with his spells, right? Just basically farming the same amount, so... Yeah, it looks like Team Spirit's playing mostly just to secure their side lanes. They're all just doing their own thing. They're two on two. No one's no one's moving. No one's doing much. And they're trying to be content 50-50 all their lanes. I think they're very confident in how their heroes match up, just in pure one-to-ones on the other team, so... They don't feel the need to pressure towers early, pressure anything. They need to hit their timings. Again, this Leshrac, the Bloodstone is his timing. So yeah. the whole team's probably just playing for Bloodstone hits, or Lesh's Bloodstone, then we do what we need. And then the question is like, if you spot that arena coming, maybe you can get collapsed there in time, get the Astral save, get the big turnaround play in the mid lane. A little bit of a go here. Pops the Rage, no glimpse. FBZ chase down. Do they oh, have oh. a pull? They do, the Poshka. He got him. FBZ just gonna die. So a very nice play from Team Spirit there. They just ran on in and killed him. Scam. Oh. Nah, he should be fine. Just wanted that one last punch. <laughs> that's the that's worst feeling. You, you, you're like, ah, oh, they don't have stuns. I can TP yeah, out. Fine, fine. And then you get stunned. You're like, I have to walk back to your lane. He doesn't have boots either because he wants to get this Helm of the Dominator. A little sad. But it's not the worst. It, he still has this time. The Beastmaster always has a time. He gets level 6, he gets Dom. And he can kick out almost any carry from the game. Oh, some rewards placed up there. Probably will be taken away in just a couple of minutes here. But Yopaj will throw out that stun. Connects onto the Nyx Assassin. Still hanging onto this arena. But with no spear, that gives Toronto Tokyo some freedom to walk on in and try and push out this lane. Mira wants to contest. And it is going to be bottom. So they get another rune. In fact, this DD, some pretty good damage. They're going to take down the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, and that level one carapace, or, well, sorry, level two. I mean, it's so long. There's 20 seconds. Like, there's such a long time for you to punish on that. Once he carapace that spear, I was kind of thinking, like, ooh, this, this looks kind of free, you know? And start looking at that Leshrac with the arena, but instead they just chase down Mira at the rune. So no runes claimed 
uh, at eight minutes in by the Toronto Tokyo feels a little bit rough. And you can see he's kind of hurting from it based on that net worth, having to run back and forth to base a couple of times. But right, Mir fills a bottle, gives him a little prize from that. But again, if Team Siri feels a little, it feels a little, I, I don't know how to say it. They're just stuck in their lanes, maybe. Yeah. And the worry is if Boom is able to kick these heroes out of lane fully, that's when it starts feeling bad. Yeah, then you're forced to make a move. And if you look at their heroes, like, making a move is not very easy. It feels like it's kind of on the back of Mira, obviously, once you get to six. Yeah, the, the cores don't really mesh that well in terms of forcing plays to happen. You Astral, and Astral's not the best because it also enables the other team to set up for four seconds. Mm. They can TP in, try to save, so a lot of it will be on this Nyx Assassin, I think, to kind of catch around the map. Or the, even the life Lifesteer just walking out of tower. Pushka, they find him again. Couple quick hits, and oh, Team Spirit nice looking thing. to get a bit of a return. Can they do it? Yopaz chased down, barely able to walk away from that one. And he gets out. Look at TP. Yeah, is he still sticking around here? This is crazy. This guy needs to head on back home and will do just that. So they get the kill onto that Lich and manage to escape. Was the arena used? It was. Mm -hmm. The nice thing as well is that the Beastmaster used Roar for that, so Katara probably feels safe for the next 70 seconds to sit in his lane and not feel pressure to rotate out. But now this is giving a 1v1 to Collapse. And OD, even in a bad matchup in the side lane, but giving him a 1v1 is pretty nice for the hero. And something interesting as well is he maxed his Arcane Orb first, as opposed to the Astral. Yeah, trying to get up that farm there and uh, obviously be a bit of a threat if anybody yeah. steps in too much. I feel like it's like uh, a good threat in terms of rotations as well. Try and bring someone later, through. <laughs> a little bit of some mouse issues as we see the Hellbear about to be banished to the Nether Realm. You know, it's interesting to me too, the dynamic of these two teams in terms of the pressure that they're feeling. For Team Spirit, again, returning champions. And for Boom, you know, they were making tweets that looked like they thought they were out of the tournament just a couple days ago. You know, expectations are off. Um, obviously, it's always, you know, a, a, a tough situation to be in playing like this, but they have been looking very free, uh, very fluid on this Boom team. Yeah, well, we have the uh, the timings now coming out in terms of the 10-minute home. So, Disruptor, probably going to have six here in a second. Marcy, of course, uh, a position four that doesn't really need the six that bad. Yeah, but he could be level disruptor. seven. I know, it's true, it's true. You never, you never play the pubs or the four, and you're like, I could be level seven right now. I could be so strong. Listen, Disruptor players have a special, you know, they have a little, like, a little pass. They get it, all right? <laughs> they feel the need. They got to get it. Um, yeah, and I think that this uh, level sixes is going to be an interesting uh, little timing as well because you get so many big team fight things, whether it's Chain Frost, the Vendetta to allow, uh, you know, Mira to wrap around and try and sneak up on somebody. There's a lot that changes uh, once, these, once these supports get ulties and also once the game resumes. So we're just waiting on that one. Mask of Madness done on the SF, waiting as Lifestealer is heading in and I believe has that armlet coming out to him. Uh, queuing up the Deso afterwards, so just straight up damage for this guy. So the cores have not done much rotating. Yopaj did the move top, but you can see it doesn't even feel that good for him to go top. The Lush just follows him, they take some fight, looks really scary. And I think right now this bot lane is where the action is going to happen for either side. That's where the easiest lane for... Because you can't arena the life stealer. He's yeah. going to rage your arena, walk away. So he's going to try to look to maybe arena collapse Maybe's or the life is going to go bot. Uh, yeah, if they see the life go bot, like maybe there's a chance that you follow just like the helm up top or you just, you know, all fight bot, as you said. It kind of it's kind of like last game where everyone they like Hokori tried to make the save on Lumiere's lane. They all went up there. That made such a big change as to where the game went and now uh we're we're at that same crossroads here. And this is where the life seer kind of the strength of the hero shows. Obviously it's really good, you know, mid late game. He has rage. He can he can he's so good versus all the spellcasters, but it's when you can't kick him out of the lane. That's yeah. where he's really strong. And he has armlet, he has max school frenzy. You can't really just lane verse him for fun. See you later, well, Again, Aro keeps the pressure up top, trying to force that back. There was a big movement down bottom. Look at FBZ, though. He's getting, like, the big... He just got the catapult up top with his boar oh. while he was farming the Ancients. And he finished that big that, that's stack a gamer. there, too. Yeah, that's nice. That is a lot of gold. And he needed it. He was pretty far behind on this Beastmaster. So starting to catch back up to the rest of the cores in this game. He's a little bad, but I think his job in this game is mostly just going to be to buy the, the Vlads for his team. He has two cores who use it very nicely, and it's just going to be to roar the life there. That's all they need him to do. He doesn't need to crush the game by himself. RC. 
It's hit there by the sun. Chain Frost looking for some lucky bounces. Will hit one. Do they get another? They do. Oh, no. One last punch. Mira comes in. Luck and skill and team spirit. They take on down that support. Toronto Tokyo moving in. Says Yopaz, you want some more? Glimpse to stop it. And that will be enough to keep Yopaj out of harm's way. Yeah, I was scared of a Mira stun into follow up uh, Split Earth, so. Try and remove that. But yeah, missing the spear there. Yeah, the nice, nice side stuff. Yeah, that was rough. This is where <laughs> Martyrs can feel a little scary. If you can't consistently make these arenas work, get these kills with the arena of the spears, you start to not have as much impact. You can see he's rushing the BKB, so his damage won't be too high, but... Glimpse, spear, stays on, big static storm, hits onto everybody. Yano rages, oh, the region, keeps him alive, is it enough? No! He still manages to go down a good thump on Yadaro, but it wasn't enough to keep the Lesh alive. That would have been crazy. The action managed to get the same there, too. But, uh, I mean, that's why I think Myers is so tempting. Like. Despite, like, what is he, like, 40% win rate or something? And maybe even lower. Yeah. Like, he just keeps going down, but you still see teams uh, gravitate back to this hero because he, he gives you, like, direction. He gives you, you know, you know you have arena. You know it's, like, this spell that you can go, but when you start missing these spears, uh, that's where it gets really painful. A lot of the damage from this hero comes from spear and arena. Yeah. So you miss that, you're missing out 600 damage or so on every hero. I also think something interesting uh, is the life stealer. If he ends up going for shard, he doesn't have a queued up yet, but mm -hmm. it's really cool with Lesh Rack of how it works. It'll make the Lesh Rack life steal 50% of the right. damage. Yeah. And it, it'll bounce and connect on all the different units every damage. So I think it's every 500 damage, it'll open with another unit. So it is a very close game here, as you can see. Um, a slight favor right now to the four team spirit. Yeah, that open wounds is going to be something interesting to watch for. That's going to be enough to keep alive this Lesh in these pivotal moments. Or, of course, the big hero that we haven't even really talked about has been this OD. Still has the chance to Astral uh, for those saves. But a uh, Smoke and the Vendetta used. Mira moves in. Ooh, just a little bit off on that stun. Was he not going for the Helm Creep? <laughs> he might have been going for the hero, Trent. <laughs> Mira and Impales in the top lane. Yeah. Same location, one Tight. year later. Dude, that, that's the thing with True Sight, right? Everybody remembers every move at that point afterwards. It's just how it goes. Flashbacks. Denied. Oh, they did win that TI, so maybe it's good flashbacks. Good flashbacks. Memories is what they say. All right, Invis rune. Picked up for Yopaj now. Every rune. Yeah, every, they, every rune. One. Always bringing the heroes, keeping some vision in the area as well. Unfortunately, not resulting in a, in a big lead for this hero. You know, not really snowballing your Myra's all too much. Toronto oh, is closing in on the Bloodstone, though. He's going bottom with that invis. They have a sentry, though. They spotted... Oh, no, that was ra uh, Radiant Sentry. Uh, I know, it looked like... A, you think it was sense. dire, but yeah. like, he just got out of there, right? But... Dude, Collapse was so ready. This guy's pretty good, I hear. Maybe they had a ward on where he TP'd from, but... Regardless. Oh, very nice. Fests kills that off. Now Rage used, they're gonna stun him. Tim's has the control for round two. If they go for the jump, the stun disposes it enough, it is! Oh, pretty play coming from FBZ and Tim's. The Chain Frost will not stop it. Just like that, they open this one up perfectly. It's the carry rotation. Shadowfiend goes top, breaks the lanes down, they kill the life there. It was, you know what he's doing? He infests the creep to just kill the Dom creep so that yeah. Beastmaster has no pressure, but now they just roar him. He just dies. Now the situation just gets so much worse, but at least they all have the trade in the bottom lane at the same time there with the help of the Lesh Rack. Yeah, this will probably finish the Bloodstone. Oh, okay. Toronto bought the energy booster. I got worried. Mm. Sold oh, it. Yeah. He sold it fast enough, though. He's Yeah, yeah. He's good. They did smoke up from top as they run down here. Do they have a, a dust? They do have a dust ready on the disruptor. They so. saw him. They caught, caught a quick IS on him. Oh, and it's just out of range though. So Mira will escape. Yopaj throwing a spear in anger. Sentry and ward on this cliff. If yeah. He decides to yeah, that pick his head up. It's a classic Nyx, you know? They like to run up those stairs. Bottom tower well, has tier gone. one tower taken both top and bottom. Mid open if they want to head that direction. That was a really big move. Uh, killing this life sealer. Anytime you kill a hero who feels unkillable, the next kill is always easier. It's the same thing with Timber Saw when he's a very strong hero. You kill this guy once, and he, st he starts going from, you know, diving your tier threes, being unkillable to oh. just a hero. Got it off. Saved for the moment. In some trouble now. Collapse. Does he have the ability to survive? They have infested up and get in a second if they want to use Another it. Astral. 
Astro round two, collapse, building him up, one. gets him healed back up. Now the turn, Yopaj in trouble, killed off, collapse, another Astro now. It's so much damage. It's 500 with the eggs. Oh That's my up. god. Blows him up. And they still hang on to the OD ulti. But showing the power of this pick here on the big stage. Team Spirit looking good. The nice thing right now is he doesn't have to play into the Beastmaster. Zoo's the way you beat OD. So he's constantly been bought. He hasn't even looked top probably, hasn't even touched the lane. His team's coming to him bot and they don't even worry about the Beastmaster. He's yeah. relatively poor for what you would expect from this hero. And he hasn't had much impact outside of that life Lifesaver kill. Yeah, he died at some pretty crucial moments and now they start to surround this mid tower here, but they're bringing a lot of units. There's no static storm, but they do have that glimpse. So if you drive them off, maybe you can get a pick off. Tower dropping so quickly. Yeah, they're they're gonna take this one. Team Spirit, come on in, claim the tower. They do Astro one. Do they have? Oh, it's just a four. Okay, that was the another board. hero. Oh. Nonetheless, what? one big thing is uh, they glyphed, I believe. So now, Boom has no glyph. So if Team Spirit's feeling really good, they can go for a tier two right now. Yeah. Take a look real quickly at this replay and how close it could have been, but Collapse was there for the save, and they just handled him. Well, likely a smoke coming out here soon, too, you would think, uh, from Boom, right? You have Arena back up, you have Static Storm. They're, they're trying to think of the big play they want to go for. Absolutely. Let's see if they head up to that side of the map. Hitting uh, BKB timing on the Shadow Fiend, just about 400 gold. And Boom still has very strong timings. They're going to have, they have double BKB soon. Uh, Marsh just finished his. He gets an Invis rune to catch. No blinks yet on the side of them, so their, their jump is not the best. But when they're able to sit there, stand with BKBs, the sidekick, Maybe they fight around a Roche. Oh my They're really strong. Dude, Spirit's vision is unreal right now. They, they have watched like four heroes walk from the top rune, down through their jungle. Now they see them over by their uh, the shop as well earlier. So, or not the shop rather, but like heading towards that outpost. So there's tons of wards in that area from Spirit with their 3k lead. Gives them the, uh, the safety to just sort of farm up a little bit more. And now with that information, they're going for the fight. They run into him. The smoke. Heading down south, and it's FBZ that is going to be the first point of contact. They might have seen the axes there. FBZ backs away, anticipating some heading over that direction. This is not where you want to fight for food. They want to go. They want to force a Roche right now. I think they want to force a Roche or a tower. They want to force an area that Team Spirit's forced to walk into. Yeah. Their hawks, their vision. So you can see they're, they're pinging it from Tim's. Tim's is just all over that Roche. They're going. Yopaj invis. And no sentries around, so if they head up this direction, he is there to break it off. And again, another one of these just runes picked up that could be game-defining. Yopaj there, they drop the sentry. He's still over in the trees, though. They spot him, Ward, he's just out of vision. They'll take it down now, and Team Spirit not wanting to give up this Roche for nothing. Yeah. We reset again. It's all these games. Best of ones, so much nerves. You, you don't want to be the team that makes the bad move. Yeah. You want to always make sure your moves are good, they're clean. Even if they end up gameplay-wise not clean, you want the the moves as a team to be clean and together. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Well, and after farming out bottom and then heading top, Team Spirit back to it in their own jungle. Boom is going to spread out a little bit. They're going to show Yopaj on that bottom lane at least for a moment, and now Toronto Tokyo heading on in, ready to contest for this rune. It is a DD, Jackie's gonna pick that one up. Oh, DD, BKB, Shadow Fiend. And this is with a, a lot of gold investment right now, just being stacked and waiting on the OD and the Nyx Assassin, right? They want these Blink Daggers just to transform their heroes a little bit here, give them that extra reach. So this is a good time for Boom, a lot of empty gold right now on Spirit. The lead is not as large as it seems. They head on in, there's no way to see into the pit right now for Team Spirit. As the Hawk gonna start taking it. Get the D ward. And are they just going to give this up on Team Spirit? It looks like it. This is where the team fight comes in for Boom with yeah. Disruptor, Mars, Beast. They have so many heroes that you don't want to walk into them. Wow. But just like that. that. Boom. They're going to claim the first Aegis and Team Spirit. Give it up for them. We'll see if they can wait this one out because last game we just saw how quickly things can turn around around the back of an Aegis. You can see they're building for the fights here with the Halberd done on Yadaro. Try and ruin Jackie's team fight. Oh, ready to move in. They're gonna defend mid still. <laughs> Even into the ages. They wanna smoke the infest on the Nyx. They'll look for Mars. He walks away. 
I think. Radiant are scanning. He's pretty slow. He's good. <laughs> yeah, he gets out of there. Radiant scan. They knew that play was coming again. That was nice. Anytime you you know the team kind of rotates a lot of heroes mid specifically, the only way they can leave mid is a, a spoke or a aggressive play. You can't really split up in all directions because now you don't have TPs for 80 seconds, and you that's how you get picked off. So the nice foresight to know that Team Spirit's going to make an aggressive move. Bit of a classic at this point, right? The aggro immediately after Roche, trying to sort of like ruin this uh, composure that you get having the Aegis, feeling the safety around the map. Yeah, there used to be a long time ago, it used to be you get the Aegis and you're like, oh, they're never going to fight. Yeah, they, they all come. I have Aegis. Yeah. Like, he wouldn't kill me, Dyer's but right. nowadays a lot of teams just kind of take that buff and will kill the Aegis really fast or kill the one hero who's trying to abuse the Aegis vision. Yeah. Wow. That one hero who really needs an item extremely badly, like Yopaj on the Blink Dagger right now. And uh, you can see that in that sort of vacuum of space, Yopaj comes on in, will farm this, while FBZ took the mid tier one tower with his summons. Uh, so still very even game. Poshka the one that's keeping this lane pushed out continuously. Oh. It's, a, it's like such a battle of the vision for the Beastmaster and the positioning of Collapse. I feel like, you know, if they can spot him first and get an initiation on the OD, the spike could look so good for Boom. Courier coming on out. The blink that was underneath the ward. They saw this. So Spirit playing it safe right now and going on over. See if they can find somebody as they head up the hill. But Spirit, they're already back underneath their own Tier 2 tower. It looks like they want to defend the Tier 2. Utero TP's mid, smokes up. They want to get probably a support. Or if the Mars in. dies, 100 to 0. Oh, look at that vision, though. Yeah, that's running on in. Smoke, Kyra, scouted. Toronto, Tokyo heads out to there, just doing little tap dances around each other. Everybody knows where they're at. My biggest concern right now for Boom is whether they have the damage without the SF. I think the Mars is kind of low damage. Beastmaster's not having an amazing game. Uh, so it's a lot on the back of this Shadowfane, I think, to kind of do everything in the fight. They have to play around him, they have to protect him, he has to kill everyone. Mm -hmm. On the side of Spirit, you know, Life Seer dies, maybe the Leshrac goes. Ooh. The Leshrac dies, OD maybe carries them. So it seems a little more of a tricore on the side of Spirit. And boom, it seems like a lot, all their eggs are in the back. They, they actually have so. so much more damage on Spirit. Ward, drop down, they see everybody. Boom. Team Spirit have to run away again. They will manage to force him back for the moment, but Boom taking good vision in this area, and with a minute and a half left on the Aegis, could be spoiling for a fight, or even just to try and bully Team Spirit. They haven't been able to accentuate their lead mm -hmm. as Team Spirit keeps farming. They're, they're kind of, they're not being bullied, you know? They're, no. they're kind of like looking at him, like, yeah, okay, we got an Aegis, what? You want to fight? We're, we're ready. It is causing them, of course, to stay relatively grouped, and so you can see that Boom gets a slightly bigger spread there, but you gotta be a little bit careful because we know that they're ready to try and abuse that spread if, you t if you're uh, too confident in your Aegis. Luckily, they've lost a lot of their vision, so the Spirit aren't exactly sure where they're grouped up right now. Butterfly is finished for Shadow Fiend, so Life Seer is not gonna do too much for him. But it's Looking also out for this one. The glimpse back will be saved by Astro for the moment. Spear, that was Rage. Yopaj goes in. There is nowhere to fight. Maposhka down low is going to die, but a couple more of these Astrals. Mir getting a little bit of separation. Split Earth is on the BKB. Toronto, Tokyo trying to do what damage he can, but it's not enough. They want to bring him down desperately. A couple more punches, oh, but he's away. Two still dead. Boom. Look for more. Find the OD. And boom. They take him down. Three for nothing. So maybe they should have respected the Aegis a little bit more, you know? It's just, just a little bit. Just so much, much damage from that SF. And now, even though the Aegis is expiring, this is going to be another Tier 2 tower taken by Boom. They used Glyph. There's no more Glyph if they go for the Ooh, Tier 2. That is very Friday. It, they, Aegis is expiring, so I think they might respect Team Spirit, but... It's, it's certainly such a, a little poke and probably like Yodo just like still hitting the, the creep there as well. He gets it down, okay, nice. But th this was kind of crazy, right? Like the fact that he had the the uh, the enrage or, uh, off in time too, so. And then of course, <laughs> it got kind of weird. He like infests the Lich, the Lich isn't moving, then they get stuck. I think the important thing right now is uh, they use the Lich Frost Armor before the fight started. Mm. They kind of use it as a, he can walk in, he won't die, yeah. he'll kill the creep versus they go on him I protect him with this. And I think that's kind of what caused the Lifesaver to die in the fight. So if he gets Frost Shielded, uh, I think that's actually going to be the big change in the next fight that Team Spirit needs. That's all they need to do. 
thing that's interesting is also like this build that the Shadow Fiend has gone straight butterfly uh, afterwards, after the BKB. Uh, really good, obviously, against the Life Stealer, but then the other one is going to be this OD, these yeah. Arcane Orbs. Um, doesn't really want to have to itemize to deal with this for Collapse. They're going to need to wait for that BKB to be down on the SF before they can really take an easy fight, at least. Yeah, thankfully, uh, he's not... He doesn't really need to press his orb. His goal in life is more going to be just astral people to either to save or astral enemies so he can set up for his ult. But it's going to matter when it's like, you know, the, it gets down to the end of the fights. Everyone's half health, low mana, yeah. no BKBs. That's when he could, you know, three shot the SF. But if you miss two of those three hits, he's not dying. I'm going to be looking for a little bit of goodwill from the Dota gods. All playing here in their home region. Boom. Wanting to see if they can keep this pressure on. Radiance Only one outer tower remains. A 10 to 6 game, not too many kills, but a whole lot of pressure being felt by both of them. As they're going to wait out for this next Aegis, a minute and 15 seconds till it's capable of respawning. And taking that bottom tier 2 as well as putting that pressure on the tier 3 tower right now. now grab this mid tier 2 as well. And uh, in another minute, we'll know just how close that. You can see the lines be drawn by Tim again, directing a lot of the team throughout this match. He's just saying, just stick together, right? We, we know our plan right now. We're very strong at the moment, and they, we have that good team fight. They know that Roche can start respawning in about a minute, so they want to take this uh, dire jungle away from them and then hold the high ground, hold wards. They want to be ready for Roche before it happens. Or just have fun with your ult. A lot of constant spam there of the Requiem. I think the really nice thing as well is Yopaj. You see he went BKB Blink, and he knows he's not going to do this Deso or the Ags, the damage. He doesn't need to. So he's going to go for a Sheep and also for a Refresher. So he's playing purely stun heroes, nice. team fight. That's all he needs to do. Just be there and control for your Shadow Fiend. Smoke up Team Spirit, no vision in this area. KB out at BZ. There is a surprise inside of that Nyx. Be careful. Be a little bit wary chasing too far. I still will pop out. But that's BKB down on the Beastmaster. And the Roar which the Roar is one of their biggest tools versus the Life Stealer. You can use it through Rage. It's their only tool they can use through a BKB hero. And a quick spawn on Roche, so potentially those won't be up by the time this fight could happen again. Yeah, they actually want to try and pressure that bottom lane by the looks of this well. They're like sending Yopaj down, seeing if they can create that uh, imbalance on the map. But Team Spirit, they're moving faster than that. Poshka heads on in. They already de-warded this area on Boom. Their scan misses. Oh, now they see him. Maybe a chance. Smoke breaks. FBZ. Oh, they could swing at him. Just barely gets out of there. Oh, so close. That was very, very close. But Team Spirit head on in and are going to take this tier one tower. So Roshan is up. There's no roar for 25 seconds. No BKB on him for 30. And Spirit does have the ability to Roche very easily. The Life Slayer can do it by himself. Even the OD orb works on it now. Mm -hmm. So they have the tools to do it. And they, they see it. They Both have the, the Hawk too, yeah. So. Hawk doing some work here. And now here's the part of the dance where Boom's gonna try to take the jungle back for them. So they have the high ground advantage in the fight. Pushing up mid, pushing out bot. Always about these pressure, these the, lanes, the vision. The Hawk is just doing so much of them right now. You know, because it, it lets them get this pressure in the mid lane, lets them get this pressure in the bottom. They don't have to worry about the fact that, like they know that Roche isn't being taken. They don't have to worry about some smoke play or something. They're just chilling. Yeah. The, this, this Roche is the big one. It's the second Roche, that's generally, the first one, Ah, it'll give us 2,000 gold, but you don't really end the game with it. The second Roche, you get Shard, you get Aegis. This is when you have actually hit your timings, and you can actually end the game. So whichever team gets this Roche is probably going to be firmly in the command of the game for the next five or so minutes. Sliver picked up for the SF. More ways to just make him hit harder, stay alive longer. And even queuing up the Sanjin Yasha next. So wanting to just be this whirling damage dealer uh, in this game. Well, a smoke happens, five this heroes. Is, uh, also, like the first time they give her the buybacks can be really huge, right? For this Roche as well. Yeah, that's also a big reason why Dire Jungle is so important for both teams to take. The Outpost. It's yep. the Roche buyback. And right now, Team Spirit has it. So they should be a little confident about the Roche fight, but it's all about the team fight. It really feels like Collapse is the big one. Like him not having the buyback too. Like he's someone who would get back in the fight so fast if he were to go down first. Watch for it. And Team Spirit, they did take that upper tier one tower, which is normally where Radiant will come to help reinforce and save the spike carapace uh, okay. hits. All right, yeah. 
Uh, won't go for anything else there. Mira does have that blink dagger, but it's a little bit scary to make the move. The, the big Carapace plays so far today have, uh, have led to some victories. I, I think he's really happy he has the shard right now. If there's no damage over time, the Nyx is able to blink forward and stun him there. Yeah, yeah. true, true. Blink canceled. Stay away from him. Yeah. Maybe can hit a couple of big Maybe spears there along the way, too, onto several heroes. We'll have to watch and wait and see, but boom, they feel strong, they feel ready. They're heading into the pit. Satanic is done for Jackie. I don't know if they spotted him going in here, actually. They might not have. So Team Spirit on the outside, and of course, without any easy vision in here, they're not going to oh, be able to man. tell that this is happening. Tokyo's blink is coming right now as well. They want to make the, this on fight the happen. Side, there's pressure with the creep, so they, they're just being pulled around the map of what to do. And it's moving down. It's going down quickly. They drop down the field, looking oh, for he, a jump. Does he go away. in for it? He oh, gets it for the ages. It's in time. He got glimpsed out before he grabbed the shard. Oh, man. That was so close. That, was... that timing. <laughs> that timing, though. We've seen some crazy Roche deals. Uh, Zin Q in the group stage was doing yeah. a lot. And suddenly, a 7,000 gold lead for Boom with no more outer towers left to go. I mean, Team Spirit, they've got to be sweating at this point. Uh, how, how's your patch feeling? All right. You can get a haste rune, you know. I find that go a little wild there, but back to farming. Seth, Aegis in hand, Jackie. Ready to move this one up. It's Yopaj's first TI after being a standout player this entire year and wanting to back up the rest of his team, see if they can get up there onto the high ground, take build-ins. I think Boo might slow it down for the next minute or so. The Shadow Queen level 20 is a really big timing. He gets three more damage per soul, 60 more damage for one talent. Yeah. Um, so I think once they hit that, that's probably where they're, all right, I have my timing, we go high ground, we, we can end the game, honestly. Spirit, what is their answer going to be? Because right now, we haven't been able to see a successful move from them over the past couple of minutes. They have this Halberd, which seems really strong on Yadaro, but it's been a lot of like, okay, we can save this person, then we can save that person, but they haven't been able to do the damage that they need yet. The biggest thing is uh, actually starting the fights. Again, all of it is on Mira to start the fights with them. You don't want to really start with Astral and show your position. Mm -hmm. And so the Life Series constantly have to infest. He can't farm. They have a Tim's BKB coming right now as well. So he can really get into these fights. Banish, Split Earth. Connects there for a moment. Just tickling for now. Another round of the Astral. Jackie will just walk away from that one. He sends himself the BKB and the Paladin Jeez. Sword. And Tim's just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> They're ready for it. Try and force some Astrals. Now, the OD has no BKB, so Marcy gets on top of him. He can just kill him. The yep. Static Storm as well, very good for OD right now. It's really scary if Boom gets these team fights going. They did finish the AC on Yadaro, and we still have a Plate Mail on the Lesh. So those heroes at least are going to be that much stronger and capable of keeping themselves alive if these fights go out. It feels like uh, Spirit have just been incredibly patient this entire game. Again, they, they feel very confident with their heroes going to late game. The question is, are they going to be too far behind when they get there? And will Boom keep that pressure on and force them to uh, have some type of reaction? Now, Mira is moving in. Obviously, very dangerous with that life stealer in tow. Things could go wrong, and you don't have a BKB TP out with the... Beastmaster in the pool. That gem is still on skim as well in the disruptor, so. All right, I think this is this is go time for Boom. They want to go high ground. They just finished AC. They just got level 20. The Refresher Orb is now finished by Mars. They just have all these timings. They want to go. They want to end this game. Got a fresh Glimmer as well on skim. Everything's coming together. The Glimmer. I mean, if this push doesn't go well, if they lose this Aegis, if they lose a big team fight, how hard does that swing things back into the favor of Spirit if it happens? It's pretty rough on you. It depends on spot a refresher. Yeah, I think it depends the... on the the life stealer. If he okay. survives the fight, he gets items. Because again, spirit, all they need is they need to throw one hero into the wolves, which is going to be the life stealer. He's going to get a frost shield. He's going to get astraled, and then if he survives all that, then he keeps fighting. Then the lush gets to own the fight. The od gets to own the fight. But the biggest question is if he has enough farm, if he has enough time to actually survive this fight. That's why the bot fight, uh, he dies first. The fight's over. So it's all about surviving this initial jump for Spirit and sending a hero in two get jumped. For now, they're content to hold this high ground. Net worth lead, staying steady, 9k. Oh. They finished the Daedalus. Okay, I love what Mira just did. Mira uh, just grabbed a sentry. So I was actually looking through it, trying to figure out, uh, you know, because they were all sitting on Maposhka right now. Because if you think about that Glimmer save, 
Because yeah. uh, he's going to try and do some sort of a carapace play where he jumps in with the, the, the life stealer, and you really don't want the glimmer to save somebody. There it is. A first opening. Just the impale, but the frost shield on the tower. And then they jump out. They're going to use the glyph now. Not exactly the way they wanted that one to go. And they're still underneath the hawk. This vision there the entire time. Pushes him back. Oh, no. Follows him. Catches him with the save. It's there for the moment. Can he get out for round two? They've already lost Mira. Chase down. Couple punches. Yadro trying to get away. The crit was not enough damage, but they do still manage to take down that tower. It was a buyback from Mira. And then just like that, they get out. Yeah, he still has the Arena Spear, but he does not have a, uh, a BKB. Yeah, two BKBs used on the Mars. BKB on the Marcy. BKB on the Shadow Fiend. Beastmaster still has his, but... He has no roar. They don't have radiant. They don't feel too bad. I know the Aegis no. will is expiring now, but you never feel bad. Anytime you win and you get a win, you shouldn't feel bad about taking the win and walking away. Right. And and will Spirit now walk out? Right. And that's the other dynamic is how far behind our Spirit. It's 12k gold, but in terms of items and fight potential, um, I feel like we haven't really even seen Team Spirit get a good one into their favor yet. It's going to be a, a tough one to watch as they try and pick up their next round of items now, 37 minutes in. Again, I, this Leshrac hasn't been able to do too much in the fights. I think a lot of the time the Lysir is either dead or everyone's BKB, and he kind of wants to wait for everyone's BKB to run out to be this really strong threat. And so the fights have almost always been over in the duration of the BKBs. Mm -hmm. Ward drop down, they see him. Toronto, Tokyo needs to be careful. The Spear blink back. Gets him for the glimpse, BKB TP out. Okay, that was insane. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. <laughs> that guy has won a TI before. Yeah. <laughs> Quick fingers. I saw Gunner's face, he's like, damn. <laughs> yeah, okay. Arcane rune up top. They're just buying timings, but you, they have to at some point think of what is their timing. I like this. I'm, I'm down for a replay on just a blink. Yeah. <laughs> Gets him out of there. So, boom, after taking the tier 3 tower, are going to try and make another assault down here at bottom. Still a minute and a half left till Roche. And they're actually finishing off a Dragonlance, bringing it out for Jackie. Always a bit scary, walking up high ground without Aegis. Oh, bang the drums, though. Looking for it. They have the Sentry Ward down. Impale the star. Big punch, Dash. big catch. Is it enough for the kill? Oh, no, they didn't get it off in time. The ODOT missed. The save comes out from the Marcy. That was exactly what they needed. And now the pullback. Do they have enough? They do. Yadro down. No buyback. Oh, boom. They sense something. They sense the moment. They can feel the crowd. Oh, he's so close to buyback, too. And they want to take this one down. Tier 3 tower getting hit. Jackie from the low ground. This would be such a huge upset. They have looked solid this entire game. Look at Yopaz just lying in wait there with the smoke, using that ninja gear. Has refresher back up again in a second too. 10 seconds left now. Can they do this? Looking for it. Collapse. He's revealing himself. He's got a ward on the right. He sees them all. They're thinking about it. Jump forward. Spear back. Arena down. Get over here. Round two with the refresher. Tim's in. They're catching. They're killing. Boom. They're doing it all. Team Spirit, they don't have the answer. There are still no buybacks. Still dead They're for a little while shot. longer. They chase them down. Big blast. And another one dead. Team Spirit. They're all laid out. It is over. Oh, my. They're going to take it down. Mira back up again. The crowd's getting into it. There's a third row shot, but they don't care. They want to end this game. They want to send the TI champs home. They throw the spear in to stop any blinks, to stop anything at all. Jackie trying to take it down. Mira looking, hoping, desperately want to take this out. But Tim's, he runs in. He punches the ancient team spirit. They don't have an answer. GG! Boom, come in and upset the champs. You couldn't write it any better. A CTI. Boom Esports doing it for the crowd. They're on their feet. They love this. Unbelievable performance.